Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We need to figure out the results of this auction. Did I buy a burst? I'm sure if that was the case, I probably would have got a phone call looking for a lot of money, but we might as well take a look at what we missed last time. So in case you missed this episode last week, I went through and just looked at all the Kissimmee auction guitars. So let's go ahead and react to some of these prices. Whoa! I really regret not looking at this one. So somebody was actually telling me this was a custom ordered one off or something like that because most of the regular crests were not customs. That's bizarre that this one only sold for five grand. But again, remember, you've got buyer's premium on top of that. But even still, that was a really good deal for somebody. But I've also noticed that some of these good deals end up getting relisted despite reserve being met. The Bolin guitar, you know, those things get listed for crazy prices all the time, but that just goes to show you not that much interest when it comes to the auction hammer. This is the one I really wanted to see, the Explorer Artist Prototype. That brought in quite a bit of money. I mean, for an Artist Series guitar, they don't go for crazy money because, you know, a lot of people don't really like them, including myself. But that one being a potential prototype, but not an official one, I still have some doubts about it being a real prototype because it doesn't have the official prototype stamp, and I think that's what hurt its sale price. But, you know, four grand plus buyer's premium, I don't think Brian did too bad on that sale. Looks like CME didn't do half bad on these brand new guitars either. Especially at buyer's premium. Jeez, those people could have bought them brand new. But I guess there is a, a little bit of an allure to buying them at an auction. You know, directly from CME. The bowling ball strats did pretty good. Looks like a lot of people preferred the blue one just like me. Oh, no love for the ES-295? Jeez, I'm glad they had a reserve on this. That guitar, easily. I would pay you five grand for it today because that's just how amazing these things are. Now, I think if I remember correctly, there's been some modifications, but I still think five grand is about what it's worth, even in this kind of condition. I'm not necessarily, you know, the best when it comes to quoting out 50s guitar prices, but when it comes to 70s and 80s stuff, it definitely makes sense. And now this is one that doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe somebody can explain this or Meekum can make some clarifications. Remember this guitar? It sold last week for like 1600 bucks and the reserve had been met as far as I was aware, but then it got re-auctioned and ended up a little bit higher at 2300, which is definitely good. And another thing I noticed that the Les Paul I was talking about last time, that it only brought in 20,000, I guess it got re-auctioned and then ended up at 43,000, which <laughs> makes my Steve Howe at 30 grand just look like a steal. It has way more significance than that crappy one that just had brass parts. Sure, it was in books, but it's undesirable. It doesn't have the best parts of it. Looks like Rick Nielsen did pretty good on his Modern. I didn't have to help him out after all. 40, geez, somebody way overpaid for that. But they probably did it to have the Nielsen name to it, which, you know, is kind of cool. Now, Friday, January 10th, this was the bursts. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think I was actually losing sleep thinking I would have to come up with $90,000 to purchase Scarface. Wow, $207,000. That is impressive. So somebody actually sent me a picture of the Scarface mod. So thank you, Brian, for doing this. I was under the impression by the listing that it was just a small part of the wood taken out. That's the entire pick guard area. Now they did an okay job matching it with all the other wood grain and stuff. I'm surprised somebody paid as much as they did. It, it all definitely came down to the top. Because if I was seriously bidding on one of these ready to pay full retail value, this is the one I would have went for. It's just beautiful. It's a plain top, but you know, it's not molested. They didn't do too bad on those. All right, what did we miss on Saturday? Okay, so that was the Getty Lee 355. Yeah, that's it. did you guys hear the news? Neil Pert passed away. I'm not the biggest drummer. I was just a young guy playing with my stepdad's work band at the time. He was really into Neil Pert. And then it looks like this one's gonna get auctioned off again at 45,000. Then the final one here, Saturday. This was a whole bunch of stuff. As far as interesting stuff, that Melody Maker did okay. That's about what you would see on Reverb as about a top dollar price. So somebody actually probably paid a little bit too much. Wow, that Flying V didn't do so well. About five grand. You see those things get listed on Reverb for about seven to eight all the time. 
Wow, that seems pretty cheap for that 56 gold top too. I didn't think that's such a terrible price for a three pickup Black Beauty, but I think 7080 is about right, if I remember correctly. Let's see how Gary did here. Uh, he just had a bunch of mod. Wow, whoa. He did pretty good on that special. $7,000 for his Maverick. I have no idea if that was a good price or not, but I would imagine it It was okay if he let it go. He did, I don't think he did as well on this Modern, though. Whew. 50000 for Elvis's Rosewood Telecaster. I think what? I thought it was going to hit like 200000 That's definitely a surprise, but that's what I kind of learned about these. When it says the bid goes on, apparently it gets auctioned off to a bunch of other people who want it way more. And then the price is like double or triple, so it's at least a $100,000 guitar. That's definitely a nice piece. So, this episode's a little bit short, so let's go to eBay. I haven't guitar hunted on eBay in a long time. I've never done it on camera. I'm going to show you how I do it. So I used to have a laptop, it ended up dying on me, but every time I'd pull it up, these tabs would always come on. But what you wanna do, for whatever brand you're doing, I'm just gonna use Gibson, cause that's what I know. There's two different ways to hunt for these guitars. So A, there's auctions, which kind of gives me another idea of what to do for a series where I'll just start actually looking at these things again and then film them like the last two, three minutes of the auction. You can see me become very depressed and very happy. It, I think it'd just be a fun series, you know. Granted, if I'm at a computer at the time, sometimes it's on my phone, most of the times it is. But what you want is auction and then you want ending soonest right here. And then this is gonna show you everything that I could buy right now. So there's a custom shop Firebird at 2,400. It's in like a Heather Poly finish. It's a fair price, but I'm not really into the one pickup Firebirds for those kinds of money. Got a EB3 base project here. I guess it depends. Does it have the electronics on it? It looks like you need to repair the headstock, get all the stuff. Oh, I think, is it 68? But there's like only like two or three years where it has the slotted headstock, if I remember correctly. Ooh. So this has had a previous headstock repair with splines, which usually does the trick if it's done right. But then it was broken again. That does not look like an easy repair fix to me because you never know what somebody else has done to that. And it looks like they've spray painted it. For a hundred bucks, I bet it could be fun for somebody. Move on here. Somebody wanting way too much for one of those cases. And then these guys have just been relisted for years. Like, yes, this is a very rare case. There's only like 50 of them out there. But 800 bucks, unless you find somebody who's missing that case and really desperately needs it, probably never going to get anywhere close to that amount. But I find with these auctions, you really got to be watching them. This is why I quit my full-time job. It was to predominantly hunt on these types of websites for these guitars. Nowadays, I, I don't have to do that as much because I have a YouTube channel that makes me income as well as buying and selling the guitars. But really, I just view myself as a YouTuber at this point. The buying and selling income is just, you know, kind of icing on the cake. These things, if you have any of them just laying around, sell them they're worth so much i don't see why people buy those unless they're trying to pass off a counterfeit for real that's the only motivation i could see somebody paying the 100 to 150 bucks these things usually go for oh, here's a, a 69 les paul usually people are wrong when they call them a 69. it's got some nice aging to it yeah that's definitely the late 60s potentially even the original frets yet that ding right here could almost show you if it was a pancake body or not, but not quite. If you're not familiar with these, a 68 is worth the highest, and then once the 69 hits, they start changing key specs, like you start getting the pancake bodies, and the volute starts to get larger. I believe that's when the Made in USA stamp starts. I would not touch this one. That serial number does not look right to me. That looks like somebody's etched it in after the fact. I think I remember looking at this one once before. Huh. Looks like this guy paid eight grand for it. I think he got taken. Honestly, the frets look rather tall on this one. It's potentially they did a nib retention refret. This could be a fun project for someone. So Gibson Dependable, if you ever see one of these listings, what they do is they buy used guitars and then they part them out. 
I don't see how they're making money doing what they do, but apparently they do. Yeah, that it might have just had a weird head stalker pair. I mean, yes, the logo was completely wrong and you know that's been modified, but this is what scares me. This looks like it was like a, a knockoff melody maker that somebody just put the Gibson decal on. Somebody played the crap out of it though. <laughs> I don't see why this guy doesn't clean them off. They would probably sell for more, but it's probably just more time. Somebody's got a, a skull on the back there. Is he selling this as an original Gibson? This guitar is covered in poorly applied paint. Needs refinished. Aftermarket routing, yep. Headstock is poorly repaired. If I was selling this guitar, I would not be able to sell it as original because they do the headstocks don't do that. It almost seems like it moves down and then flat. I don't think this was ever a Gibson. I think they got played on that one. That's what, you, you gotta be careful what you buy on eBay. I mean, Gibson Dependable, I mean, most of their stuff is legit. That just happened to be the one example here that I ran into that just had something wrong. But here you can see all the other things that were in it. So it looks like it had the right Gibson parts on it. Maybe it was just a crazy head stock repair there that they did in a very funky way. But I would definitely want to see pictures of that truss rod before moving any further on that. Gibson Dependable and Stratosphere, they, they do a service for guitar people that need to restore things because who else is going to sell their Melody Maker pickup besides this guy? So this is now available. If you need vintage correct tuners, you do it here. But instead of taking the scalping approach, they just auction them off. So I think it's a risk for them every time if they actually make money or not. That's not something I would be interested in doing. I hate parting out guitars. It takes forever and you feel like a murderer when you're doing it. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that That's always how it goes. You find something interesting and it was ended by the seller. Let's take a look at this anyways. So it was a Gibson in an emerald burst finish. Starting bid 900. Got slash pickups in here. So it's kind of anaconda burst-esque. That would have been a fair price at opening bid. But this is where I usually cut myself off once it starts to say a day or more. Like I might look through to see if there's anything that I need to make sure that I'm home for or around my phone to know about. But for today, it just looks like uh, all market value stuff here. So now the other thing you can do is another reason why you want to stay home to buy guitars. So you want to go to buy it now and newly listed. Hey, see, <laughs> the guy just decided to relist it at a different price to buy it now. Sometimes things like that happens, but you have to be very, very, very careful when it comes to these guitars, because this is where the scams all come into play. You can get scammed on the auction part too, but this is where you got to be careful what you buy. Honestly, 1050 is not a bad price on this. I would be wanting to sell it at about 14. Oh, it looks like he actually lowered it. When you see this, sometimes you can message them and say, hey, do you want to do, you know, 900 ship today? If it had the original pickups, I would highly consider that. I mean, this thing's definitely got some wear to it, and the double cut Les Pauls are a little bit harder to sell. These pickups are definitely worth the same, if not more, than the original set. I'd be willing to pay 800 bucks on it. I mean, somebody's going to outbid me, but sometimes they don't. So we'll see how that goes for us. I probably should have just messaged them to see if I could buy it straight away. But I really don't want this one that bad. I've already documented these, so this would just kind of be a buy and sell type thing. But I do like the top on this one. It's a little bit wavier than most, and you don't find the emerald green finish very often. Another filter you're going to want to know about is if you're within the continental USA, you're going to want to come down here and select that. I usually do North America because you also have all those Japanese resellers. And while yes, they do occasionally have a good deal or a really rare guitar, it's annoying scrolling through all their listings. That's a nice studio custom. You don't see many studio customs out there anymore, but the prices are so high. I mean, you could get a real custom for this price, but the thing is they're not going to be as lightweight as these studio customs. So some people do prefer these because they have those slightly thinner bodies. This is definitely a very fine example. I don't like the headstock lines. I don't think he's going to be able to get top dollar simply because of that. 
Not necessarily that, you know, makes the guitar any worse or better, but hey, at least we still have the original Tim Shaw's in here too. And finish checking there. Again, nothing structural. This guitar is just fine, but even I would only be listing something like this at about 1850, expecting it to sell around 15. That's about the market on the Studio Customs. What else do we got going on here? A bunch of these husks. The Stratosphere is the other one you see all the time. Usually these husks are good little projects. I've actually purchased at least one or two and pieced them back together. Sometimes that's a good way to get a good deal on a limited edition finish. And sometimes I get people asking me, is it actually worth buying it and piecing them back together? No, it is not. Unless you already have the parts and you just want to complete a guitar and you find that fun. That is usually the best way to go about it. But if you're doing something where you're going to buy this, 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 and this, everything that you took off the guitar to put it back together, you're usually just better off buying a used one, sometimes even a new one. Custom Shop Paul Jackson Jr. Signature Model. Can't say I've ever heard of this one. Doesn't sound like a terrible price. Oh, isn't this the Pat Martino? Because it's got the straight pull headstock like those initial DCs had. I guess I didn't realize there was a, another signature guitar that had kind of similar specs here. This is a great way to learn about guitars. This is how I got my early education. Heck, you even have the certificate of authenticity. Th those usually get lost when they're these large pieces of paper. Wow, looks like Wildwood has one of these at $3,899 that you can buy yet today. And it looks like Guitar Chimp has sold one around $3,299. And he did not have the COA or paperwork. And then here's one for $2,300. <laughs> That makes things like this confusing. Maybe those wine red ones are slightly more desirable because that's a beautiful guitar. Ah, that's interesting. Custom shop right there. Instead of on the back of the headstock. Interesting choice. Wow, there's one that sold for 14. If I had to guess, it had to have had a headstock repair, didn't it? Yep, there we go. But you also see some of these selling around three grand. So if somebody asked me for an estimate on what this could realistically sell for, I would tell them between 2000 to 3000 because usually they'll be haggled down. I think 2500 is that sweet spot. And that's pretty much right where this is. You know, since I'm uncomfortable with the model, I would be at about 17. I mean, we can see if he'll take it. Looks like one competing offer. I'll throw him 1750. That's not that bad of an offer, really. I would have went up to 2000 but someone else bought it. So, must have been a better deal than I thought. Or there's something horribly wrong with the guitar. Moving on. Yeah, see, there's another one of those DC standards listed at full retail value. That's not a bad price on a custom shop SG. I would say fair value. Six pounds, that's pretty light. See, here's a better price on a, a double cut Melody Maker. This one, <laughs> similarly routed and beaten up. It's actually got additional routing here. <laughs> what are the odds of this? We found two fake Melody Makers. Somebody's out there scamming. Replace headstock veneer. That is not the right truss rod that should be in here. So this is 100% a counterfeit. It's almost like somebody's taking these and hacking them up on purpose to make people think that they're vintage guitars. <laughs> D do you see this? The fretboard truss rod and frets are all replacement. They're not completely finished, but they're installed. However, the fretboard does look fairly new, so maybe we can believe it, but why would you even want this? Usually you can actually find some decent husks. What are the odds of that? This is why I don't shop on eBay too much anymore. It's usually more hassle than it's worth. And then this guy right here is stealing my look for my photos. Probably not intentional. He just, he probably just has a similar rug. Gibson Eddie Van Halen electric guitar. You know what we call this? It's called keyword abuse. So what do we actually got here? We've got one of the Epiphone by Gibsons. Notice just Gibson in the title. That upsets me so much. I get it with the PRS brand. It's PRS SE. 
ESP LTD. And I think that's where people get this from. But this is a guitar I would love to feature on the channel at one point in time. They did Stratocaster knockoffs and they did Telecaster knockoffs in a very similar style. Now this one has a little bit of Jackson knockoff built into it as well. Not all of them have the shark fin inlay. But I love the ones that have the mother of pearl. Epiphone by Gibson. <laughs> I think he's dreaming at these prices though. So I think I've been hunting on eBay here probably a good 10 minutes or so. This is why I say that you always need to be around for these because just in that small amount of time, let's refresh the page and see how many new guitars were here. Where'd the green one go? Sometimes they can end the auction and just make you the winner automatically, but it looks like we had one new listing. Sometimes you can have like 10. It just depends what time of day. Why did it just disappear? That makes no sense. Oh, I understand. Since I put the bid in, it's no longer a buy it now listing. That's why it disappeared. Well, I think that's going to about wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed guitar hunting and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.